Do you know what causes tinnitus after concussion and what can make it go away? Uh, I talked about this one last week because somebody else asked the same question. It is a common question. I will cover it again. Uh, we don't know what causes tinnitus necessarily. There's a few potential reasons why it could be. Um, there's a condition called Meniere's disease, which is 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 more rare, and it typically um, it comes on because your the the little canals in your ear produce a fluid, and that fluid is what stimulates little hair cells to tell you where you are in space, right? So when you turn your head, the fluid will spin in those canals and stimulate a little hair cells that will tell you that you're moving in a certain direction or, or you're spinning in a certain direction. Um, or there's some sort of inertia, meaning you've, you've, you've initiated movement or, um, yeah. So that's how your vestibular system works. So your, the, the canals and stuff are making this fluid, but there's a feedback loop that tells um, the, the, the canal to stop making fluid. We have enough fluid, stop making fluid. Now in the condition of Meniere's disease, basic because the same thing happens with the stimulation of hair cells in, your, in, in the ear for the perception of sound. So you have semicircular canals in your ear that, that detect movement. Those are the ones for your vestibular system. Then you also have the cochlea, which is for sound, and that has the same type of fluid within it. And the, the sound hits your eardrum, which stimulates a couple little bones, and that stimulates the fluid to vibrate through that canal and stimulate hair cells, depending on what frequency, and that's what allows you to hear. So in a condition called Meniere's disease, the mechanism that tells your system to stop producing fluid is kind of broken. So your system continues to produce fluid so you get an overproduction of fluid and that overproduction of fluid increases the pressure and that gives the sensation of this constant ringing but it can also uh, give you the sensation of dizziness and unsteadiness. Those two things go hand in hand. This is more rare. A lot of people get diagnosed with Meniere's disease don't actually have Meniere's disease. That comes on in attacks where you'll have attacks of vertigo, ringing, and all that stuff that'll happen for a period of time and then it'll kind of dissipate and then it'll come on again and it'll keep doing that over time. That's Meniere's disease. That's not typical with concussion injuries. Concussion patients will often just have this low level faint tinnitus that's pretty constant. It does kind of come and go, um, but it it is there more often than it's not. That we don't necessarily know why that happens. There's some theories that potentially maybe there was damage to, to the, 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 the various canals, maybe there was damage to the auditory nerve a little bit. Uh, there's a thing called the labyrinthine concussion, which is actually a concussion to the labyrinth of the ear, which is basically affecting your perception of sound um, and vestibular. So that's, that's a theory as well. Um, we don't really know. One area that I have found helpful that a lot of people don't examine is the, the relationship of the neck. So the upper part of the neck into your throat is where your eustachian tube is. So you have these little tubes called eustachian tubes that go from the, your throat basically right behind your tonsils in the back. There's a little opening that goes out to your ear. Okay. Now, Sometimes those get sealed off and the, there's, there's a buildup of pressure. So there's a pressure difference in there because that eustachian tube has been closed off. So you know when you're flying and, you, and you, you're going up and down um, and you're having changes in pressure in your ears and you can pop your ears like that and acclimatize the pressure. That's kind of what this is, right? Now if that's closed down, you have this differential in pressure. Sometimes that can create a ringing in the ears. So I have with some patients been able to open that up with, by working on their neck and have tinnitus completely dissipate. In other patients, I haven't been able to do that. So one thing you could look at doing is having, there's a technique where you can actually drain the eustachian tube. So you put your, the, the, the practitioner will, if somebody knows how to do this, some chiros will do it, osteopathy. Um, there's, a very, there's a whole variety of people that would do this, but basically you go into the mouth behind the tonsils and you put some pressure and try to open up the eustachian tube to create a drainage of anything that may be in there, or at least a pressure equalization. I've also had, like I said, effective results by just working on the muscles of the neck and working on the upper neck, adjusting the upper part of the neck um, with, with various um, types of treatment and, and, and it goes away. Other times I've tried to do that, no dice. Patient still says, no, it's still there, it's still ringing. I typically what I'll do is I'll refer them to like ENT, uh, which is like an ear, nose and throat doctor, um, or um, have some, some auditory testing done. That's typically where I'll go with that, just to make sure that there's nothing being missed. 
um, and that the cause for their you know particular tinnitus may be um, is is more likely to be something benign than uh, than something else. So I would just I would go through the the process of investigation, rule out anything bad, and if it's and if everything is coming back negative, and you know all the findings are are, are con continuously negative, then I would look at things like chiropractic treatment, um, eustachian tube drainage, anything that can possibly work. I mean, there's not a ton of scientific evidence for this type of stuff, but it's something that um, it can't hurt and it might help. So that's what I would say. Thank you.